In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made made heaven heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With a voice of singing, declare this with a shout of joy to the end of the earth. Alleluia! The Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. Alleluia. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of the of his name. I cried to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. But truly God has led us He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be he, God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Glory be. of singing, declare this with a shout of joy to the end of the earth. Alleluia. The Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. Alleluia.
Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Rogate, the sixth Sunday of Easter, is from Numbers chapter 21. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten when he sees it shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble and gathered him from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert ways, finding no way to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way till they reached the city to dwell in. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of men. For he satisfies to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them 
from their distress. The epistle is from James chapter 1. But be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he is like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Christ, who has redeemed us with his blood, is risen and has appeared unto us. Alleluia! I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Jesus said, In that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive and that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech, but the hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise. We confess our common Christian faith and show love for one another by confessing together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Whatever you pray of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. The predominant theme today in our hymns and readings is that of Christian prayer. And behind the prayers is your identity. You, ought, you know that you ought not just pray to anyone. The only way to confidently pray is to know who you are and how you relate to the one who hears you and gives to you. You know that you may ask the Father because you know that you are his beloved children. And as dear children, you have a dear Father. You have full access to the divine Father God. Everything that is his is yours. So just ask. Now, you are his children by his giving. No one can actually make themselves a child of the Heavenly Father. He's not your Oliver Warbooks. It may be a hard knock life, yet no amount of choosing, pursuing, or hoping will make this God your Father. Instead, He chooses you. He gives, you receive. He has given you the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit and baptism. He put his name upon you. And this is why you are called Christian, child of God. Because you've been marked with Jesus' cross and with his name. You have his blood washed upon you for atonement. His flesh is your sparkling white garments. His cross is your branding and his name is your own. You are Christian because you are Christ's. That all of this is a gift to you from your giver, God. Again, we must be clear here. You are God's children, not because he created you, but because he redeemed you. To be redeemed is to be bought back, to be purchased with his own son's blood. And your adoption as sons in Christ that was given to you. Only those in Christ Jesus may rightfully then be called God's children. Because in him and in him only do you have forgiveness of sins. It's precisely that good news of Christ's forgiveness that God uses to gather you unto himself. Because in Jesus alone does the Father give you the promised inheritance of salvation and eternal life all of this yours by your baptism. Now, when we forget that we are already in Christ, then we often return to who we once were. Actually, our lives are marked by this going back and forth between who we are in Christ and who we once were in sin. This is nothing new. Our forefathers did the same. God chose Israel as his people. He redeemed them by the blood of the Passover lamb. He delivered them from bondage and slavery in Egypt. He overcame their enemies with the waters of the Red Sea. And he was leading them with the promise of a land that would be theirs, a rich land flowing with milk and honey. But as we heard, the people became impatient on the way. They forgot who they were. And they forgot their God who was for them. And so they spoke against God and against the one whom God sent, his prophet Moses. In effect, they were saying, and they actually said this literally on a, another occasion, it was better the way it used to be, slaves in bondage, to that tyrant Pharaoh. He was a far better father than you. We loved that land, that foreign land. 
We loved living in that land of evil, of idolatry, and even under a king who was killing our male children. Incredible. Just a few, the span of a few months or years, they forgot God's great mercy and his steadfast love toward them. They forgot how he had chosen them and brought them out. They forgot who they were. They forgot their name, the redeemed of God. And they give away their birthright for a pot of lentil stew. And it was for this reason that God sent fiery serpents among them. He allowed them to live like they once did in Egypt, to live apart from him, to suffer pain and death again. After all, apart from the giver God, apart from their heavenly father, there is no good thing. Not freedom, not healing, not life, nothing. And the serpents then were given to them as a quite deadly reminder of who they once were. This is how the Lord calls you to repentance. He gives you over to that which you desire. He allows you to forsake him, to forget him, to leave him behind, to neglect his word, to fail to confess your sins, to ignore what God did for you in your baptism, to neglect his very body and blood in the sacrament. He does this to call you back to repentance. Like the prodigal son who squandered everything that was his, his birthright under his father, and only then realized what he had lost. The father then restoring his birthright and his inheritance. Every repentance is returning to the confidence of who you are in Christ. You said today, I, a poor, miserable sinner, a sinner in need of God's mercy. But that wasn't the final word. You also said, be gracious to me and merciful to me. Or perhaps, in the way of your fathers, we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against his prophet. Whether it was old wandering Egypt, whether it was old wandering Israel, or it's you, the new Israel, repentance is trusting in the mercy of God that has been revealed to you in the holy, innocent suffering and death of Jesus. And the final word from God is never you shall die, but always forgiveness and life. So again, do not forget who you are. Do not forget whose you are. Because you are in Christ, you are already now a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. By your baptism, God the Father gave you new life and continues to give you every good thing. Those are his words for you today. And his words give you what they say. They're not empty. They're not powerless. When God speaks, he does. When God gives you a promise, he keeps it. To give another example, St. James speaks by way of metaphor in the way Numbers gave it by way of story. Our people in the wilderness had heard God's words but refused to be and do what they received. God said, you are my people, and they said, we'd rather be pharaohs again. God said, I redeemed you from bondage and death. Remember the death of the male children? And they said, wasn't it nice in Egypt? To say it in the way of St. James today, be doers of the word, not hearers only. He gives a metaphor, and it's, it's that of a mirror. 
A hearer and not a doer is like a man who, observing his natural face in a mirror, observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. A hearer and not a doer forgets that he is in Christ and that God is working all good things, accomplishing everything in him. He hears for a time, but then the words are not given root to germinate, to sprout, to grow, and to bear much fruit. He hears, but he refuses to listen. Or, again in the way of James, he sees, but he refuses to believe what he sees. And he'd rather be what he imagines himself to be, what he was. On the other hand, this is how James would have you look in the mirror. To look in the mirror and see in himself, in yourself, Christ Jesus by faith. To see yourself in the mirror as one whom Jesus Christ has redeemed. And to not then forget who you (laughs) are, but rather to forget who you once were. James says that when we look in the mirror, we ought to see the perfect law of liberty. The perfect law of liberty. Now that statement is rich with meaning. Because you know that the law is the eternal will of God that's been revealed to you in the books of Moses and precisely in the Ten Commandments, the Ten Words. Those words were given to the people in the wilderness who had forsaken God, who had forgotten him, to bring sin and death upon them, that sin might increase, and to show them how, apart from God, they could do no good thing. Namely, that this, these words, these commands, could be fulfilled, could be obeyed, could be kept, could be held fast to only by one. One man whose name is Jesus. In Jesus, we see the perfect will of God, not only spoken, but done. Not just heard, but done. Only in Jesus do we see a hearer of God's word and a doer. Jesus is the one who obeys his Father's will completely and perfectly. And because he obeyed his Father's will and also suffered the chastisement for all of our disobedience, we have in him a gift, a great gift. That is his righteousness. That is his perfect obedience and his blood-bought full forgiveness. He kept the law completely and has given us this obedience as a gift. We are made righteous in Jesus. And since the law is kept, then we are free. Liberty. The perfect law of Christ sets us free. Free from accusations, free from judgment, free from captivity to sin, free from the law's condemnation. It's true, when you look in the mirror with your eyes, you see only yourselves. But maybe next time, see this. See what was done for you in your baptism when you were clothed in Christ and united with him in his death. When you look in the mirror, see one for whom Jesus Christ died. And thus, see in the mirror a complete, obedient child of God. Yes, it's true, your flesh clings to you like filthy rags, Paul says, a body of death. And while this is true, we remain in a struggle to do what we know is right and to not do the things we know are wrong. But essential to this struggle is not our own strength, but rather faith. Faith given by the Holy Spirit, faith that rests confidently not in who we were, but who we are by God's giving in Christ Jesus. When you see yourself in the mirror, maybe see the mark that was placed upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. And thus see in yourself Jesus, the perfect law of liberty. 
Such confident faith, knowing who you are, your identity as a Christian, means that you now know not only what to pray for or even who to pray to, but you also know then how to speak and to act, to be doers of the word. You aren't the same people that you once were because you are in Christ and thus the old is gone and the new has come. You are God the Father's beloved children, beloved children in Jesus, purchased and won, chosen and adopted all through the waters of baptism. Don't forget who you are. And pray God keep you in this faith and in the perfect love of Christ until he comes again. May God grant it in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you tenderly invite us to bring our petitions before you, and you promise to hear us. Keep us, we pray, steadfast in the faith, that we might ever cling to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has overcome the world for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for raising up faithful pastors among us to care for your holy flock. Fill them with your spirit that they would never tire of preaching Christ and him crucified for the salvation of all who hear and believe. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. Almighty Father, keep this nation under your care and bless the leaders of our land, especially our president and our governor. Preserve us in safety, liberty, and livelihood. Heal our divisions that we may be a people at peace among ourselves and a blessing to the other nations of the earth. Give us grateful hearts for the freedom we enjoy and for the men and women who have given their lives to keep us free. We ask you also to preserve all who work in emergency and medical fields. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, extend your compassionate and caring hand toward all who suffer tribulation in this sinful world. Spare us from this pestilence and its effects, and look with mercy especially upon the destitute, homeless, and those impoverished in our inner cities. Motivate your children to be doers of the word and not hearers only, that they would be your instruments of love to help and assist those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, look with mercy upon all who are sick or suffering in any way, especially those whom we now name in our hearts. Restore them to health or give them the strength and perseverance to endure. Above all, comfort them in the sure and certain knowledge that their Redeemer lives and that they have the promise of eternal life through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, we give you thanks for receiving all those who have gone to their heavenly reward before us and now rest from their labors. Keep us with them in that same faith, that together with them we may receive the promised inheritance of your eternal kingdom as fellow heirs with your Son when he returns in glory on the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant to your church your Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes down from above that your word may not be bound but have free course and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people that in steadfast faith we may serve you and in the confession of your name abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you.